Hello, everybody, and welcome to another... What is this called? What is our network called again? I forgot it. The Tabletop, Tabletop RPG, RPG Network. RPG Network. No, I'm just <laughs> fucking with you guys. Oh, sorry. Trying to not do that on here. Anyway, welcome to another Ooh. Tabletop RPG Network. This is a July a 2000. Yeah, July 2020. Thanks to my mom. She got me all upset this morning and said, Did you know that Clint Eastwood died? So I immediately ran to the internet. Clint Eastwood died. That's what she said, but he didn't die. He's like Charlie Daniels. Daniels died. Charlie, Daniels, Charlie Daniels, did. Daniels, yeah. I could see how you would yeah. confuse Charlie Daniels and Clint Eastwood. Also, why does your he's... mom suddenly sound like Marge Simpson? Uh, Bart! Huh? I used to be able to do her really well. My son used to make me talk in her voice all day long, and it would just thrash my voice. That and Hank Hill. God damn it, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby? 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 I told you, boys, to quit whacking off in my tool shed. But anyways, welcome to another uh, Tabletop RPG Network for July. Our topic for tonight is, what is your favorite modules of all time and what are your least favorite modules of all time so yeah we'll, we'll start with uh we'll start with drake this month uh, drake what, what's, what's going up, on everybody? man yeah hey what's yeah up, man drake? yeah man um i don't know i haven't ran all of the wizards of the coast modules yet so uh there's two i don't think i've run which is can be any um, game module. Yeah, it doesn't have to be five E, Drake. Oh, it doesn't be have 5e. to be five E. Yeah, it does. Because yeah, that's all I run. Oh, I'm sorry. So, well, actually, my favorite <laughs> one. I'm gonna do both. My favorite one in five E currently, and my least favorite one in five E, is one in the same module. Actually, what? I can't wait to hear this. Which is yeah. Tomb of Annihilation. Oh. oh. I love <laughs> everything except to the tomb. Yeah, you and mean everything. Sucks. And everything Rob, after it's the, the total opposite. Yeah, I'm so. the opposite. Everything in the tomb yeah. is good. Everything before that sucks ass. Yeah, see, I, I like the other way around. But my all-time favorite module is, I should say, uh, adventure is a Red Hand of Doom. Red Hand of Doom. Ooh. Oh. That's an old school adventure. Mm. Yeah, and somebody's tweaking it for five E. So, <laughs> what did you uh, what did you like about it? I just like the way it flowed, and you know, you're in town, and a troll comes in and smashes open the door. You know, it starts off yeah. like <laughs> uh, just in... spoilers. Well, if you haven't the played troll. the module the since it's released, <laughs> that's your fault, dude. That thing's been out for a long time. So the guy, in the crying game, it's a dude, just so you know, from 30 years ago, if you haven't watched the movie yet. No! Oh, it's on my DVR! It's on your... I was it's on almost your... there! It's on my DVR. I had five minutes God. to go, and I paused it so I could come in here. Thanks a lot. Darth Vader is... Betamax. <laughs> so what... Betamax. I'm kind of interested, Drake, now that you mentioned Tomb of Annihilation. I actually liked it. I liked the... The hexagonal traveling part of it, the old school feel that 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 it had. So you said you didn't like the tomb, but what did you like about it? What Sorry, did I like I'm, about, I'm grilling you. The, Sorry about the that. Whole, um, well, the uh, I just love that feel, the jungle survival. There's a dinosaur gonna bite me in the ass kind of feel, you know, mm -hmm. that you could die tomorrow and no one can bring you back. And then there's massive, random uh, undead encounters with the lich and stuff like that. Those are pretty deadly as well. Kind of had that that X one, you know, Isle of Dread feel also. Okay. And that, I read Ring Ring of Winter, and you know that's just a good book. And the ring is awesome, and it takes place in Cholt. And... Spoiler, yeah. sorry. Did you ring? Did... Spoiler. Uh, if they haven't read it by now, it's been out for years. So I, I so. DM'd um, Tomb of Annihilation, and basically, we did, we just bowled through the jungle part and got to the tomb. <laughs> That's what we did. Well, you can, yeah, I mean, you can always, like in your case, Rob, I mean, why not just cut everything out 
and just do the dinosaur yeah. races. We we and did have we some did fun with a, that. you know we hit the highlights. We did the races in the city and the, how you're supposed to start, and then we went out and explored a few places. And I got them to where they could level up, to then we could go to the place. But did you do the evil R word, the railroad word? Oh, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, DMing is nothing about railroading anyway, because you're going from point A to B, and no matter how long it takes you to get there, you're still railroading them. So whoever came up with the ro- oh, railroading is horrible. Railroad. I thought I was thinking like, where, where was there a railroad? There. Like, yeah. where was a train in this story? I don't remember. <laughs> I wasn't thinking railroad. Yeah. <laughs> it, was from where, it was a where Thomas the Tank Engine. At night, you would turn into him. <laughs> so uh, I get to pick the next person. Robin. You can you can peel oh. yeah pick whoever you want. Oh. oh. Okay. Um. So I'll start with my least favorite module because you always do bad news first and then good news, right? Uh, my right. least favorite module is a uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen for fifth edition. <coughs> I, back when I ran it a long, long, long time ago, I was a really bad DM. I'm still kind of a bad DM, but I was worse than. You're not as bad as and- Rob. <laughs> Um, I just, I've never played with Rob, so I'm sure he's terrible, though. No, I'm kidding. I love you, Rob. <laughs> it's so um, on Rob Knight. <laughs> he's in I the ran, middle of my screen, so monkey in the middle. That's right. <laughs> uh, when I ran Horde of the Dragon Queen, I really struggled with, like, that, the, the section where you're with, like, the caravan, and you have to go, like, all the way from, like, one, oh, you know, yeah. another, like, point A to point B, long traveling bit no i just i didn't like it i hated it you gotta make it up that's the problem you're like i know wait there's like 800 mile travel here and i have to make this shit up there's nothing in here <laughs> yeah i mean how they I give even, you like how do i make an encounter in in fantasy ground you know that's the, exactly oh and it gives God. you like bits and pieces but for me and back then it just wasn't enough like i was not my skills weren't strong enough so i really struggled with it um my favorite my most favorite module um some people probably haven't even heard of this one but it's called a most potent brew by winghorn press and it's meant for um new dungeon masters actually and i i find it a really good sort of introductory model a module for new players whether you're a new dungeon master experienced dungeon master but it's great for new players um it's very short very sweet um, and it has like a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of exploration, a little bit of combat, and a small story, and it all works really well together. That's so cool. that was my favorite. I I agree with you when with Horde of the Dragon Queen, uh, that stretch that goes from Waterdeep, or I'm sorry, Baldur's Gate, yes. all the way north. That 1900 mile trek, that was really bad. Ah! That yeah, was really bad. Like and I think they addressed that because remember about six months to a year ago, they redid Horde of the Dragon Queen and put it in that big, thick, double hardback with the fancy dragon cover and stuff like that. I think they mm-hmm. they changed a lot of the adventure because of that. But, oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not a dragon yeah. anymore. You're fighting a lich. So I agree with that. Was, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That was the first one, a right? Draco that lich? was the first fifth edition. It was. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, coupled with Rise of Tiamat, right? They were yes. together. Oh. That's, yeah. that's correct, yeah. And actually, uh, I had Wolfgang Bauer on, which was the creator of that. Uh, yes. Wizards did not create that. They actually right. they right. contracted Press that did, out yeah. yeah, to Cobalt Press. So. I guess it was changed in house several times after it was submitted, and there was actually, if you read the the inner cover of the the book, Mike Merle's actually kind of writes in a semi quasi maybe apology about changing things on Cobalt Press, and you know because Five E was new, they were working on it when D and D Next was still in playtest. Hey guys, so, we searched yeah. this pile of garbage up. Here you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about Mike Merle's needing to apologize on Twitter. I didn't know that's what the reason was. No. So. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, they, they, but I agree Ouch. with you on that. Uh, uh, so yeah. So as for and sorry, I'm chiming in, but. No, on, I love on everybody. it. <laughs> because you mentioned you liked the module that you liked because it was great for, for new DMs. And uh, if if you have not ever heard of AAW games or Adventure of Week games, Jonathan Nelson and them guys over there, they put out 
beautiful modules and oh, everything yeah. is all color coordinated for encounters for loot for dcs for skill checks gives great ex or, uh, explanations uh his his own world uh, is called aventir and that is a beautiful setting and i i like all the beginner stuff that he puts out uh be just because of the way that everything is presented and the stories are actually good too so but it kind of reminds yes. me of what you were talking about. Reminds me of AAW games. Mm -hmm. so. And I, I like a lot of like third party publishers. I, I find that, yeah. especially with regards to adventures specifically, there is a lot of good third party adventures out there. And I, I hope that more people look into them as options. They don't I'm get very near completing Rise of the Drow that Jonathan had me. That's awesome. That story. is a beautiful, that is a beautiful mm -hmm. adventure. It's and almost so done. is Snow White. Snow White is an amazing adventure too. So, all right, remedies. I'm not going to add the last word on there. Uh, <laughs> who do you want to pick? You can call me Robin, by the way. All right, um, I will. I'll go with Worm Food. <laughs> I win. What do I win? Oh, I just go next. That you want a corn dog? <laughs> oh, hoo -hoo. you but know you I'm going to go all together. <laughs> I'm going to go old school for you guys for my very favorite module. I don't know. Uh, X2, there was a module called Castle of Amber. Yes. Yes. And it was like based on Edgar Allan Poe and then uh, Follow the House of Usher. And so what was really cool about it is, first of all, you get in there and it's it's regular D&D. So everything's a trap and everything can kill you. But it's like people are worshiping gods and then you get behind there and you realize that the 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 idol that they're worshiping are people that are getting in it and manipulating it. And there's just all kinds of really cool stuff with it. And they took all the um, characters from like the fall of the house of Usher. And then they kind of made it. So everybody's like slowly going crazy. Uh, really, really cool. I think if you haven't ever seen that, I mean, that would definitely be one that I would, if, if I was refreshing something for, for five E, that would definitely be it. And what's really cool is kind of set out into the desert, middle of nowhere. And it's a lot of traps and stuff. So it's like, it's a perfect, you know, as your people are, you know, in, in between adventures, you know, giant adventures, you can just send people in there as like a, you know, holy crap, we just came across something odd, you know, and do a few days work there. Um, but the thing is, is, I'm kind of a, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying that's a good choice for a favorite. Yeah, man. So anybody else ever play that? I think if you look mm -hmm. at the cover yes. of it, there's like this giant zombie guy or something who's like crashing yeah. through into the... a castle yeah. i've read it i've never yeah, like i've flipped through it but never played it and that's kind of the thing for me right is because i'm a bit of a i don't know if you guys know this word it's called nerd <laughs> and um i find myself reading a lot of these modules and be enjoying it reading it more than i would enjoy playing it because it's just how would i ever do that but mm -hmm. Uh, and that kind of brings us to when you're like, hey, what is my least favorite? I'm kind of a glass half full guy. Everything I play has value. But there are some times that things are, are fairly boring. And uh, yeah, that's the one, man. That's that's yeah. the one. That is my favorite module right there. Can uh, we play I, that one next? Yeah, well, you'll have to do all the conversions because... We will. Well, our basic game will be playing this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, that would be perfect. Yeah, but I'll um, convert it to fifth edition for you if you want. Yeah, you can. Well, how do you convert fifth edition? All the uh, traps being able to kill people, and now suddenly they can't get killed. Oh, so she'll make tables for traps no, if you, you just, want. The traps just give them exhaustion. That's all. That's right. Oh, okay. You yeah, down, get two levels of exhaustion. Yeah, that's right. Wait oh, a minute. Crap. You'll be okay. Panic. Then. Panic. Yeah. So <laughs> other than that, I think I just enjoy. There are some games that uh, you know when you've been playing for like three or four hours, and then your GM is like uh, they have in their mind that they want to get to a spot before they stop and then they just kind of rush through stuff that's that's where i that's where i kind of don't like that and pretty much uh you know what you were saying um where you hated that whole tra travel part i loved it dave was uh, and it's all on video it was dming that and it was awesome because we pulled over, and at one point we were like sneaking through something, and because we uh, changed everything up. That I was, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Dave. The guy thought I was. Uh, the guy thought I was like trying to steal his son, and so as long as the GM just like, yeah. like makes it fun, 
that's that's okay. Right. Which I, is I, kind I, of I would say yeah, GM, I'm not good hard. at. Yeah. But I, because, I'm in the same boat. I, I because, because we changed everything up, Worm. Remember, well, remember, you were you were back. You were playing a what was his your cleric's name? He was a uh, a human Tiberius. that thought he yeah Tiberius. He was a human that thought he was a cleric. He had these was, beautiful. He was a human that thought he was a, oh, an elf. An elf, that's right. Yeah, and he had his pointy, uh, man shaved uh, eyebrows. And you were, yeah, you were at night. You couldn't sleep. There was this little girl that was lost, and you said, "Here, let me help you back." And then all of a sudden, her bare-chested father, that was all oiled up with piano wire chest hair, with this curly Q mustache, you know, total Barbara look, he, he kicked your ass, dude. I didn't remember when uh, what was it? Three Dex Rogue was playing a druid, and you asked her. Do you remember asking her? Oh, it was Misty. And I Misty. Said, she, no, she, it wasn't. She, it was Three Dex. It was Three Dex oh, Rogue was that was playing X. a druid. Yeah, this oh, is saying, yeah. just before Misty, and you said, "Please, will you transform into a bunny so I can just cuddle with you? I need a cuddle. <laughs> I just want to hold you." And yeah, that was awesome. I I love that character because he was a. Uh, he was raised, his backstory was he was raised by uh, high elves that never told him he wasn't an elf, he was a human. And so Aww. he's in his 20 before he figured it out. Yeah. And then he realized, holy shit, I, I'm not going to live for hundreds of years. So that's why he decided to go out adventuring. But he mm -hmm. like groomed his, his eyebrows to look like an elf and, and you know, he grew his hair the same way. So, yeah, that anyway. was a fun Aww. game because we didn't we didn't go by the by the module because I was like, guys, we are we're doing our own thing here, and I threw in a bunch of extra stuff that wasn't even in the in the book, and, but we did have a good time with it, and we played that campaign for oh, every week for a year and a half at least. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, it was it was. And sometimes it's slow, but I couldn't say that. Just like I, it's just like I can't. For me, I can't say that there's one module that was so horrible that from beginning to end, I, there's always good things in it, and I always enjoy something. I got so one that's just me, though. For sure. Yeah. I'm gonna throw mine over to Schmo. Go Schmo. All right. Welcome, so Schmo, I, with no wife beater on tonight. I know. Y'all noticed Schmo's chair has his name on it. That's great. That's so That's cute. Right. That's cool. I oh, like what? The what? 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 Nerds. Schmo and I have the same chair, actually. I'm advertising Smiteworks. Yeah. Nerds. By the way, Rob, I, I, I love your moved. Star Trek shirt. Thank yeah. you for my yeah. I've got the uh, I've got a Millennium Falcon velvet picture too, but I it's not here. Is that the anymore. Enterprise in the background on your shirt? It is, yeah. It's um, the Enterprise. It says Enterprise right there. So I don't <laughs> like Lord of the Dragon Queen either. It uh, it sucks. <laughs> you ran that, didn't you? When you first started streaming, that was what you ran, right? I did, and we uh, I made it through the caravan section just by skipping most of it. Um, <laughs> And then the, it's not in there. The castle right after that, my the group I was running for wanted to hit every single room, and after about a month of that, I just said, "No way, yeah, we're not doing this anymore." Did just you get tired of just killing cultists the whole time? Also, that was another drawback <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah, kobolds and kobolds and occultists. I'm sorry. See, I like to oh. I like to throw throw things up in there. Like they're like, oh, "I'm gonna go and hack through that orc," and then I'm like, "As you hack through the orc, you realize." It was six months pregnant, and the little orc <gasps> just falls on the ground. And then everybody goes from like this whole hack and slash mentality. Then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna sit there hack orcs without a problem, but as soon as one was pregnant, it's a big deal. Red card. That is Red so. Card. I love you, Warren, for saying that. I, I love right, it. So, so my least favorite <sighs> module is because of a player and. If you end up wanting me to say the name, I'll call him out on stream. No, you don't have to. No problem. Um, I dropped two. Shackles of blood. Shackles of blood, <laughs> Shackles of blood was a, an Adventures League module from the third season, where they force the party to get captured, and then they end up because they have to infiltrate a city. Um, oh, I remember you were pissed about this. Yeah. Yeah. So this this player just fought me tooth and nail to where I ended up kicking him off the table and banning him from my table for life. And ever since then, I'm just like, F this adventure. 
Um, <laughs> I'm taking my yeah, dice and going who was home. It? Say, say the name. Yeah. Name names. No, don't. Negative you don't have memories. To. You don't have to do that. I'll, no, I'll but seriously, you, though, if you, you want know. to. You no, know. I'm just kidding. I'll, just, I'll say it out loud. <laughs> Holy crap, you just messaged Digital DM? It was him? It was... <laughs> oh, my God. I just read that on the group chat. That's so weird. Uh, so my... My favorite adventure is part of an adventure series, uh, getting out of the 5th edition stuff, uh, moving over to Shadow of the Demon Lord. Um, mm. Harvester of Sorrows, the very first adventure in Tales of the Demon Lord. It's introducing players to the world of Demon Lord, and most of the time you kill the entire party. Um, <laughs> and for that, I love it. Is that yeah, the one you ran for, for me when I played with you? Um, I don't think so. That okay. This one it touches on a little bit of everything. You get a bar, you get a brothel, you get a church. What? You just kind of go through all the wonderful things of of Demon Lord. Shadow of the Demon Lord awesome. is definitely dark. It has a dark theme, and it is it is ads advertised. I uh, had uh, my players from Fifth Edition moved over to Demon Lord, and they say, "You know, I'm enjoying this. I'm getting in touch with." Uh, my darker side of, of fantasy and role playing and stuff, and they're they're having a blast. It is as advertised, like I said, it is dark fantasy, that's for sure. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna kick it over to Rob. Rob Tui. Oh, so favorite and least favorite. I I ver- I have a a big fondness for the memories from first edition. You know, B two X one I six, and especially Dragonlance. But I'm going to confine my answers to 5th edition, which is what I've been basically doing for the last five years. <laughs> and I don't know why that's funny, Robin. You keep, just keep right on laughing. That's fine. It wasn't you. It was Dave. Oh, it was oh. me. Oh, Dave throwing up when I mentioned 5th edition? No, I like 5th edition. Um, I'm uncultured, Dave. That's all I did. You so, liked 5th edition last year. Last year. My, three point my, five. my least favorite 5th edition... Uh, adventure is entitled Watching Paint Dry. I'm sorry, Out of the Abyss. <laughs> <laughs> it, because it's just such a fucking horribly written module. It's just you really bad. You I mean, thief. When you have 15 adventures that you put out over the course of five years, there's going to be one or two that are bad, and that is just really bad. I fucking hate it. Um, My favorite is probably a tie between curse of strahd and princes of the apocalypse but if you force me to pick i would pick princes of the apocalypse because of its very sandboxy nature i love that the players can go anywhere robin's throwing up i love that the players can go anywhere in there even if it's not their level and they'll get their ass kicked and go oh fuck we shouldn't go in here yet but there's not really a railroad way to do it for that adventure and that's why i really like it i've dm'd that two and a half counters is in your princes of the apocalypse where they go into the river riverdale the demogorgon or whatever no the keep the demogorgon oh yeah yeah yeah. that's a badass keep there's some really good there's four major keeps in that adventure the underground and the and there and there's i just really love and of course i'm a big mike schlave map fan and that's it's all a 16 map up. mega dungeon dungeon grinder with cultist in it yeah but there's ooh, also ooh. a story that involves like that. going around and doing the whole thing right yeah yeah I, I really like out of the abyss irregardless of what rob says <laughs> uh by the way i want to say that um Webster's Dictionary just hey, today or yesterday just made that a made word. irregardless a real word now, oh, and I, oh, I almost gross. had to commit suicide. I yeah, used to irregardless. Mm. Irregardless. <laughs> <laughs> well, Most fun I've ever had playing, though, was yeah. Dragonlance in first edition. You know, mm. you remember the world of Kryn? Back in the day, there was like four modules that were like set in the... Uh, I don't know. I remember my DM tried to get us all involved in that, but that was pretty boring. But that was back in the 80s, so we didn't have any other choice. Yeah, we we played the actual <clears throat> DL1 through DL5 or whatever, and by the time, you know, I played D&D from 81 to 87, and by the time I quit playing, when I got out of the army in 87, there was... They still hadn't made all of them yet, so we we played all the ones up till whenever they. They ended up till with nine, right? 
No, they went to 14, actually. Did they? I had the first but, line. But, yeah, there's 14 of them, and then one of them isn't even an adventure. It's like a, a it's like a war game that's self-contained. Was it I think the that is number system? nine. Yeah, the battle yeah, system. Yeah, and I think that's the one. I have that. I have if that If you downstairs. go look for it on eBay, it's like 300 bucks or whatever. Oh, yeah. shit, it's downstairs. Oh, you want me to go get it? Come on, yeah, eBay. Yeah. I'm going to make me some money. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, Bell, you're not going to play? You're not going to give us yours? I'm going to give you all mine. Who's afraid? <laughs> we got plenty of, of time. Oh, my, it's quick. Least would be Horde of the Dragon Queen, but not because of the story itself. Because I played the newer version. It was because of the DM. Because he literally read from the book. Ugh. Word for word in a monotone voice. Oh, oh no. Bueller. <laughs> We had a huge group and we split into two different DMs. Well, the one I wanted, unfortunately, I didn't get. I got stuck with the one that read the book. It was that at the very like end life. that we all came back together and the good one did the rest of it. And it was one. Oh. And then as for favorite, uh, I'm in, let's see, I'd say Mad Mage. I'm having a really good time playing that one. Of course, I was in two games of it, but kind of <coughs> appeared and then so i haven't I'm played that one what makes that mage so mad why is he so angry at people not he's he's nuts because he's got he all them teeth nuts. and no toothbrush it, 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 his mama said <laughs> it's his <laughs> ula do a little too much is that like do water a boy too much magic and all of a sudden your brain goes a little wacko <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm like that with crack Hey, maybe that's just me, though. Whose crack are you looking at? <laughs> looking at people's cracks. Uh. Uh, Dave? Oh, so I must be the... You guys got a couple minutes to pull up a chair and listen to my dissertation <laughs> now? A couple minutes. Sure, sure. Okay. Did you write, did you write something? <clears throat> Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers... <laughs> Okay, never mind. That was I still remember the Gettysburg Address from when I had to memorize it in like fifth or sixth grade. I thought you were saying I remember it from when I was there watching it. That's yeah. what I thought you were uh, talking about. Oh, that's no. That, so that's, now I know uh, the shot that was, Lincoln. That was my mom. So. Oh, Rob, we know who's the oldest in this group. We all know. I, I always a, wanted to open up a hamburger restaurant and call it Gettysburgers. <laughs> that's pretty good. If really? I opened a bakery, I would call it Pinch a Loaf. Oh, never mind. How do you spell <laughs> S P? I don't know. R. Sp I don't know. Wait, hey Siri, how do you spell umlaut? <laughs> umlaut. She's like, are you crazy, Drake? It brought up discrimination on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I, my favorites. I, no, okay, we'll we'll start with my least favorite. And Rob, you're a thief because I thought I was going to be the only one that really disliked Out of the Abyss. Oh, I, I I think it was. I think the idea was good, but I think it was just executed horribly. And that was by Green Ronin Press, by the way. That wasn't by Wizards of the Coast either. That was the last of the uh, outsourced modules for Five E. However, I will say this. Because I know Chris liked Out of the Abyss. I do like chapter one, Velkin Velve. That was a wonderful chapter. And I did like, I believe it was chapter three, uh, Grackle Stew, uh, not Grackle Stew, but Slub Ladop with the Demogorgon. I thought that yeah, was that great was with the ritual. Hold on, Dave, I think you're and... cutting out. I heard you say Grapple Doob and Slub Ladop. <laughs> I, would, I, I'm thinking that I would name my kids that nowadays are, if I are, was born. Are, are you art break? Uh, or <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. got a water buffalo jack knife down here. I did it like sounds those like two you're parts. just an angry German. I can flog and scoop and flog. That's what it sounds like to me. But I feel like just hearing the German language, it's like they're always angry. You know? Yeah. Also, <laughs> Swedish chef. It's a Swedish chef. Yeah. That's a beautiful language. I love. Uh, uh, I, I love, love Deutschland. Yeah. Ger German is awesome. But what I did not like about out of the abyss was uh, none of the maps lined up with the underdark compared to you know the 
lands above the Underdark, the actual Forgotten Realms themselves. I didn't like that. I did not like the insanity checks. I didn't like the traveling and all that other crap. I, I, I didn't like that. I, I, I don't know. I just, I didn't like all of the the NPCs out of Velkenvelve. I thought Velkenvelve was great. But when you inherit 12 to 16 NPCs right off the bat, granted, yes, I know you don't have to, but this is something that probably should have been talked about and probably thought about before it was actually released. But anyways, I, I did like Chapter 1. I liked Sloop the Dop. That was fun. Uh, other than that, I just I couldn't get into it. And it's it's... I just just couldn't get into it, and so as soon as you learn how to say the names, then you're like, those are the ones you like. But yeah. then you know, Elf called Mike. You're like, man, that one sucked because I didn't have to memorize a cool name. For that. <laughs> and and I agree with everybody else with uh, Tyranny of Dragons. Also, I did like Chapter One. That was pretty cool. The dragon the dragon invasion. That was that was decent. You know, it got everybody involved and stuff. But uh, where are you? You were there for that. Remember at the church scene in chapter one when you guys were banging on the door? Remember when all the, the Dracos and stuff kept circling yeah. around the church? And and I kept doing the guy's voice behind the door. I can't bear to hear you guys through the door. <laughs> it was so funny. And you guys were just being so stupid. And I was being so stupid. And uh, that, was, that was so good. But, a big part of it is like who you play with, right? I mean, even the most lame game can be awesome if you're playing with people that you really like yeah oh totally but my I mean, my favorite yeah, sure sure yeah especially when you're waxing your eyebrows can i guess stuff. your favorite dave before you say it uh you know what i'll tell you what if you can guess my favorite module of all time i will gift one lucky viewer a fantasy grounds standard license a standard uh, a fantasy grounds unity standard license and okay. i will pay oh, i'm not going to comp it, it i'm going to purchase it with my own money here's what it is it's okay. the independent uh pornographic version called horror of the dragon queen <laughs> okay it's, my it's all adult it's all adult you don't even want to know but when you finally make it to that last quote unquote chamber <laughs> I thought I thought I, I could be wrong but I, I could have swore you at one time said your favorite was Lost Mine of Fandover for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition yes but my yeah. all time favorite module is not oh Lost your all time favorite module well that's oh. what this is all about right okay alright let, <clears> let me think a minute is one shot X1 the Isle is, of Grid. That's close. It's in my top five, but it is Keep not. Keep on the Borderlands. Keep on the Borderlands. Oh, gotta man, you I already got. You got to guess, Worm. You got to guess. Oh, you got to guess. guess so somebody else can right guess. Here. Anybody else want? Oh, actually, Rob, I'll give you one more guess, seeing that you okay. wanted to guess. Uh, can, is there a hint? <clears throat> there is no hints. Okay, so it's not fifth edition, though. You're saying. It is not. I will um, give you that. It is not fifth edition. But yes, Fandelver and Storm King Thunder are my two favorite five E modules. Is it five? Four, is it the Giants G G Giants G ones? It is not. Okay. Game we're what playing next for Sunday. Remember? It it is not. The Giants, oh, but no. the Giants were good. Vault of the Drow was great, but Worm guessed it on his second chance. It is B two. Yeah. Keep oh, on the borderline. I didn't guess that. We already that was already. A guess, I was so playing I it off. I was like, man, I'm close oh. to Pep's forking out forty bucks for a license. I don't know if I want to yeah. do this. What's, was this thing so, on? I, no. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, so, that, so Dave, to be fair, that was going to be a guess of mine, but you. I threw it out because they said it and you uh, denied it. Because well, so. I, I didn't deny it. I didn't say, no, that's not my favorite. I said, I think there was a bit you of already confusion. got a guess. Okay, but I'll I tell you what. I think there was a bit of confusion that you were saying only my guesses count. I don't think people knew that. I, I just got back. Sorry. So is it B2, Dave? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Next month, 
I will gift we'll, and we'll promote it on the stream for we'll promote it in so, social media and stuff. I I will give that to you, Rob, because okay. I'm I'm a cool guy and I'm an awesome guy. So uh, cool. I, I and wish awesome. I was I wish I was wow. cool and awesome. But next month I'll do a giveaway for a standard Unity license. Okay. There you go, okay. everybody. You gotta watch. <clears throat> Monday. Dave, I was going to get AC5, but that didn't really count. AC? Uh, that's not a module. <laughs> that yeah, that that's true, Rob. Yeah, you're you're right on that, Ron. But I love that uh, book though. August third, everybody. Thank you, the by the way, for your favorite. Favorite. That is. So mark your calendars. The first the Monday of every one. month, everybody. Write that. First Monday, down. yeah. First Monday Don't of every month. Up. So, <laughs> Dave, mm-hmm. I guess I misheard you guys, and before I got a Smiteworks tattoo on my keister. Was that not what we were supposed to do for the game today? <laughs> I did. What? You're, not, you're not supposed to show it, that's for sure. I thought we were supposed to all get Smiteworks tattoos on our butt. No, no I've, had one for, I've had one for four years. Ah, uh, okay. I thought it was... No. It's not on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and it just says guess. S-M. You know, let's it's just, just, let's just say down. that when people say Rob, what a dick. Then now you know what they are talking about. <laughs> oh wait, host digital DM. I forgot to friends. <laughs> Thanks to the host, Rob. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, how much? Forty <clears throat> minutes in. Yeah, nice. So, let me tell you why I like keep on the Borderlands, and that is because that is the first module that I had played as a kid back in 1984 with my friends, James, Terry. Franklin, Gary came in later. That that just brings back great childhood memories of us mm-hmm. passing. That's the same and the me. way that we played it was in class, Rob. And it it wasn't what what we did was the base basically the book that we had was all cut up. We used that the glue sticks and my friend James would put this together on a piece of paper and then we'd sneak it around the class because we all sat together. So, you know, you cough and kind of slide the paper over to the other person. <laughs> you guys are playing in school. And then, great. yes, we play. Oh, dude, we didn't. Yeah, that's, then you snip the glue from the glue sticks, Dave? I failed. <laughs> let me tell you what I did. I failed fifth grade on purpose. So, my, no, sorry. I failed fourth grade on purpose so my friends could catch up to me to play D and I'm not joking. But, I, but that's, then how do you explain failing fifth grade, Dave? Uh, I, that was that was something else. No, no, D&D. seriously, it was it was fourth edition, and I got kicked out of school because I skipped my entire senior year. I skipped the first whole semester, and because this is back when they didn't give a crap what you did in school, they just wanted to get rid of you at the end of the year. But of course. When I go it, to my senior year, all of a sudden now there's truancy officers that are hunting you down. Yeah. They know you're in the Barrel of Fun arcade, but that was the whole fun part of it was but, running from know, the Dave, truancy officers and sneaking over to Orlando to Enterprise 1701 and almost dying in a hydroplaning crash going to your first convention sneaking from... Oh, man, it was a... my Yeah, I just... Yeah, but yeah, I failed fourth grade, so my friends could catch up, basically. So you were the only one that could drive to fifth grade, is that what you're saying? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I had my full glorious beard back then. But yeah, B2 was great. I I loved it because it had so many different types of of monsters. It wasn't just kobolds. It was it was goblins. It was orcs. It was bugbears. It was it was uh, you know hobgoblins it was ogres it was you know an evil priest at the end you know there was this awesome castle that you could keep going back to and selling all of your goods and man that was that was so fun but that's how we played it we passed around sheets of paper and then we would write down what we would do and then pass it back to james and then he'd look at it in another hour or so he's over there at his desk cutting and trimming and pasting and and that's that's yep. how we paid what's, played what's it. James do it now, was Dave? Awesome. Is he finally out of prison? He is a uh he's an X ray uh tech tech at uh, at a hospital. Yeah. 
So, but do you yeah. think he still plays D and D every once in a while with his kids or something? Uh, he's thinking. Yeah. I remember back in the day playing with my buddy Dave. So he's yeah. eighty-five. This guy you're talking about, Warm. He's eighty-five years old. Yeah, he's, he's eighty-five. Well, he's like old he's Pappy from Deadlands. So. <laughs> I remember <laughs> back in the day. That was that was my favorite. But yeah, did my you, did you my read the novel, Dave? I there's a novel for Keep on the Borderlands. Yeah. Yeah. 2001. I did, I did not know that. Published oh, I did not oh know. God. I stopped. Now, I stopped play paying play. attention of after like the the if quintet, the cleric quintet, attention. or something like that. It was like a uh, Regis the Halfling, and uh, there were some. I read the Dark Elf trilogy. Um, I read a couple of those book series, but after the cleric one, I just said, ah. I'm kind of done with it. So I didn't know there's a keep on the borderlands though. So that's pretty cool. I may have to look into it and get the, you know, the audio book the, and uh, listen to it. You guys were talking about the uh, giants, the steadying of the whole giant chief and that thing. <clears> that <throat> was my favorite. Yeah. My favorite. Cause we started from the beginning and then we worked all the way up through all those. And those like, were hard books. Yeah, it was awesome. I ended up with a paladin. that was like 12th level. It's like the first uh, character that I brought up that high. But yeah, it was pretty sweet. Mm, that's cool. Can't hear you, Drake. The uh, the the giant one, the hills deeding. I've ran that one the most out of any module. The, yeah, it's the, fantastic. I loved it. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, I ran it in first in edition, there. second edition, third edition. <laughs> Which one, Drake? The hill giants deeding. Oh the, yeah, the, the giant one. Anybody have They've any had it in notable every mentions? No, I, I don't know. I, I hope so. Uh, any, honorable mentions, I6, yeah. Ravenloft. Ooh, yes. Um, and Curse of Strahd for 5th edition. Mm-hmm. The original yeah, that's Curse of Strahd, too. That's a, that's a, I really love Curse of Strahd. Which one, Shma? Curse of Strahd. I, I, I finally got to run that one all the way through. Um, mm-hmm. And I kept my players one level under what they should be and then threw in some extra shit so they wouldn't just storm roll through the end boss. And we all had a good time. It was fun. That's you fun. know which one I think is really excellent? And I don't know if I'm just a nerd, but the uh, I think it was called S1. It was the Secret Assault Marsh. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and a good one, was, too. What I thought was awesome about that was you're in a haunted house, but it's people are using it for like doing a drug trade. So they're making it haunted by using the spells and stuff. So, and then my favorite part is there's one part where you find somebody who like infiltrates your party. And that was the first time we ever dealt with like an NPC that, uh, you know, and everybody's like, just like anything else, the, um, our DM handed the uh, NPC to one of the characters. So, okay, you run this guy, right? But then every once in a while, the guy would like steal from you and stuff. But yeah, he ended up backstabbing one of our our, our clerics so nobody could get healed. But it was like so awesome. You never expected that. I love that. That was really super great. That's I cool. just ran it a few Sundays ago. <laughs> That's exactly what happens, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Backstabs yeah. the cleric. Are you key? They're no, like, here, have a sword. That. help us out. Have a sword. I'm like, okay, good. Speaking of Salt Marsh, that's the only 5th edition one I haven't even looked at or read any part of it or whatever is the ghost of salt marsh people seem to really like that one but i haven't looked at it i like the very uh woven together but loose i'm using it kind of as a stepping stone and kind of a homebrewy kind of thing not like i'm i'm not because it's the it's greyhawk so my brain doesn't work in greyhawk anymore it's oh it's fifth edition greyhawk i didn't know that Oh wow! Well, it's it's a conversion from yeah, you know, older edition. So the 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 duchy of this and the town of that and the is all gotcha. part of Greyhawk. You got any honorable? But they mentions, recommend Drew? that you put it where you want. What's that? You got any honorable mentions? My honorable mention, um, it's not necessarily just a module though. It is a setting, and it's Planescape. Oh, yeah. Mm, good choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dragon Lots. <laughs> what about you, Robin? No. Any honorable mentions? Oh, no, no. Um, oh, I thought he said Robin. He did. That's going to be confusing. 
No, he did. He said Rob. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think he said Rob. Oh, I, I gave mine already. Um, I6. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ravenloft. Right, right, right. Okay, so um, it was me then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my honorable mention would be the, um, I think it's called Dead and Thay from uh, the Yawning Portal book. It's D&D one of the. The next playtest, yeah. That was the well, last D and D playtest for D and D next. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the one from the Yawning Portal. It, yeah, that like, was, was converted. Yeah, that's yeah. the one Tales that's in the there. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that for is, the original Dead and Day. Smart. Yeah, there was there was, some, was, there was, there was some <laughs> thing before there, there was, or after there, that. There, the, the red, there, there, the red crown of doom or something. Whatever they they haven't ever done it. It's not ah. available in Fantasy Grounds, but it's. It's a sequel or a prequel to the Dead and Thay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the- I really like Mega Dungeons like a lot. I want to uh, run there all the time. Pathfinder Two just announced a complete adventure six book adventure path with nothing but a Mega Dungeon. I oh, cannot me, wait for Pathfinder Two's Mega because they've never done that before in an AP. And they are doing a six put six book mega dungeon, and it'll take you from one to twenty. And I cannot wait. Ooh, that bitch is going to be awesome. Time for me to learn how to play Pathfinder. <clears throat> <laughs> mm. So what about what about you, uh, Paula? Do you have any any honorable mentions? Any other games or anything? Kind of like the one we're playing right now on Sunday. It's In search of the so unknown, far, but- yeah. I mean, but honestly, I haven't played almost everything I've ever played was homebrew. Oh, I full experience with don't have a lot of ex- everything is homebrew. No. Yeah, all yeah. all my DMs have been homebrew people. I might take a little bit from the books here and there, but they've never run a whole book. Yeah. To to comment on Dead and Thay, that was that was D and D Encounters back when they were you know, converting fourth edition to fifth edition and dead and they, that massive mega dungeon was made for like 10 groups at one time. And then in the original documents, you would like converse, the DMS would be conversing with one another and the parties would be running into each other and having some dialogue there. So yeah, the original dead and they was great, but they converted it to just be this massive adventure for, uh, the yawning portal. So, man, that would be but, like yeah. a really cool to thing thing to set up for like groups of people who stream yeah. their games. Yeah, I'm absolutely. just saying that would that would be good. You I don't mean, know anybody, do you? Would. Anybody no, you know, you would. <laughs> I don't know anybody. It can all intermix. Yeah, that would be switch so cool. players. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the streaming <laughs> thing that you talk about. So okay, if Robin, anybody's running a Starfinder or Pathfinder 2 game, I am interested in playing in a game. So, yeah. So just throwing that out there. The Starfinder <laughs> outfit came in. Oh, <laughs> did it? I, I can't wait to Did you say that. outfit? Maybe. Maybe. You mean for... like cosplay? Yeah, I mean, Captain it's uniform? like for Babs. Character's name is Babs Boone. It's Boone, not Bunny. <laughs> Boone. I love that. <laughs> yeah, my last name is Rob Twal. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I just made that up right now. It's horrible. Gwydion said yeah. in chat, what a mega dungeon for Pathfinder 2. Awesome. Yeah, they yeah, announced yeah. it, man. It is it's coming after the uh I believe it's coming after uh the agents, the new agents uh uh AP that starts this month. So, I don't know. Uh, what's up with a one shot, Dave? Have you have you nailed down any dates yet? So I I haven't nailed down the date, but I'm working on that now. But my uh, I will say I will talk about that in just a second. But my honorable mention would be something that is not a and D or Wizards of the Coast product or or TSR. Uh, it's actually from Pathfinder First Edition, and it's Rise of the Rune Lords. I when I went to the game store uh, here in El Paso for the first time, there's like this uh, box that's reduced. And there is this Rise of the Rune Lords book that was 75% off because it had a warped cover. And I'm thinking, okay, I can just kind of bend it the other way and, you know, 
get it, get, boy, was I wrong on that. So, but I, I basically, I took, I cut the pages out <clears throat> and then I hole punched them and then I just, I put them in a, uh, in a three ring, a nice three ring binder. So I have the, and I never put, the only thing I played was Pathfinder beginner box set. And that was, that was fun. <clears throat> but yeah, I read Rise of the Rune Lords and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, this Paizo company, because I was in the mindset yes. of if it didn't say Wizards of the Coast, if it didn't say TSR, it was just garbage by default. And that was a major flaw that I had as a gamer. And, well, I, and I had that mentality yeah. for a long time. But yeah, there's so many great games out there. Shadow of the Demon Lord being a great one. Uh, 13th Age is an amazing game. Uh, Numenera is a wonderful game. But you know, Rise uh, of the Rune Lords is but, one that you read, and it's a really interesting it's to a read. It's an unbelievable story. Yes, yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's why I said there's some of these where as you read them, it's like there's no – I mean, it's more exciting to read it and learn about the lore and stuff than it would be yeah. play it. Because it's like how am I going to you know, impart about these you know, three mayors who back 600 – Except unless I do exposition, but you know, how are you yeah. ever going to have people learn that? But it it does it helps you set the <clears throat> stage for how you're going to run your characters. Oh, it's, it's written like, oh, beautifully, man. like you said. I yeah. mean, it, it it brings the world into play. It it brings the cast and character. I mean, there's full multi page spreads of all the villains, all the heroes, all of the NPC, and that's I think that's probably why I've gravitated towards Pathfinder second edition so much because I didn't think I was going to even invest in Pathfinder to, to begin with because I, I was so into five E and I love five E don't get me wrong. You know, I may, I may have fun with it every once in a while, but I love five E. If I didn't love five E, I wouldn't have played it for seven solid years. And, uh, I like how that number keeps growing to a number that's longer than it's been out. For 17, <laughs> uh, it's been out since 2013, 2012 over with D&D Next. played it for over 600 dude, years. I, dude, I played it way before it even officially came out. I was streaming it. I was the first one to stream D&D Next with you all know, of the, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, the yeah, Minds of minds of Madness. And when they redid X1 for D&D Next, they did a play test for that. Oh, yeah, we ran all that stuff. And, um, yeah, uh, that was, uh, but th when I read that, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And the way that everything is set up and, you know, the maps and the details on everything about the world. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is really impressive. Cause I had never, I didn't even know what an adventure path was. I never took the time to look at what, you know, Paizo had, but when Starfinder came out three you years ago, I, I was like, I wasn't a big three point. I, I respect 3.5, but I wasn't a fan of it. Uh, so when Starfinder was announced, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, I applied for the play test. I got, I got into it and I was thinking, okay, this is going to be Pathfinder in space. And it, it wasn't I mean, <laughs> because everything was changed. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the rules were taken out and cumbrance was changed there was a lot of things that I really liked about it. I'm like, holy crap, this is really good. And it's it's a perfect mix of science fiction and fantasy. So it's like, to me, it's like a sci-fi fantasy. That's how I see Starfinder. And with all the Starship stuff and everything, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. So I got all the subscriptions and I won Pathfinder 2 and the playtest was announced for that. I just immediately was gravitated to it. And then when we played it, Rob, uh, mm -hmm. I had a great time with it. And, you know, Quid did a great job running it. And so, but I didn't even know I was going to pick up Pathfinder 2. Uh, but I decided to, and I'm so glad I did because it is, it is such a beautiful product. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Worm, you son of a bitch! <laughs> it just chokes me up, Dave. Ah, <laughs> uh, but anyway. Oh my God! You guys will see the light one day. <clears throat> will we? Yeah, I don't know. I can't probably see the light when I'm probably not you. 
Well, I would love to play Pathfinder. This leads me on to my last topic before we bid everybody a farewell. I am going to be doing a one shot for four people in the network. Uh, these are beautiful little one hour Pathfinder society quests, they're called. And they're about three or four pages. They're beautiful. I mean, it's just like looking at a book. I mean, it's not just black and white and hand drawn maps. I mean, this is like quality shit. And uh, look at Rob over there just rubbing his forehead like, no, 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 fucking no, no, in right now, that, please. No. I think Robin <laughs> so, gave me your headache. So yeah, oh, I'm going to be sorry. running that. I need four players. So if anybody's interested in playing Pathfinder 2, this will be a official Pathfinder Society game. So you will be able to go onto the website, log your character, uh, and uh, you'll get boons. And... <laughs> Drake, yeah, oh no. Give no. me a character, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to register yeah. your character and stuff, All but right. you have the option to. So, yeah, yeah that would be pretty cool. But you get, like, boons and stuff like that for the stuff completing I'm just gonna play. quest. And, yeah, it's pretty Do cool. Do you accept people who know very little about Pathfinder? I love yeah, new that's, players. That question. I, okay. I ha- always have a soft spot towards new players because I always hate reading on RPG forms where, you know, our hobby needs to grow, right? And our, po- and our hobby has been more popular than ever before thanks to D&D 5e. And it's such a rule-friendly game. But when I see DMs out there saying, please, no new people. I just, I'm just i tired of teaching people. Then, dude, oh, you just horrible. need to get out of the hobby, please. And I'm sorry if that's any of my viewers. I'm sorry. I'm just saying how it is. Our hobby needs to grow. And please don't do that disservice to a new player that we're trying to get into the industry. So, yeah. yeah I'd be interested in For doing sure. some one-shots, Dave. To the yeah, that's cool. So, I, in fact, uh, we'll be doing that next month instead of, and we'll probably have a roundtable. But I'm also gonna run that uh, probably here uh, sometime in uh, middle to late July. So I'll have a date for everybody. It'll be in the uh, the Discord oh, channel, and we'll uh, I yeah, we'll have some fun. So long, Dave. Thank but you. these these <laughs> these Pathfinder Society quests are only about an hour to two hours. Because I'm sure there will be a lot of talking going on, so I would probably say it will probably four. go for about two hours. Four so. hours. No. <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's an cool. Two, four. two hours on stream and yeah. two hours of BS afterwards. Yeah, right. So is Pathfinder Society like the Illuminati? Am I allowed to tell uh, my friends about it? You can. Okay, I don't have any friends. Can I yeah, tell my dad? But they'll need to give you blood from their firstborn. And the oh, secret sweet. handshake. You mean yeah. you mean more? And the blood. secret password, which is Mahabone, brother. Mahabone, brother. All right, so that's all we got. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, I think it's just about six o'clock, isn't it? Wow, we're finishing right on time. So, thanks everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bell. Thanks, Drake. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Wife Beater, <laughs> aka Schmo. You bet. And thanks, Worm Food. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the full cast next week. We have uh, a couple folks with some PC issues and stuff, and we may have uh, another channel or two added for next month as well. So, all right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. And until next month, very first Monday, and don't forget, August be there, 3rd. be square, because I'm going to give away a Fantasy Grounds Unity standard license to one lucky viewer. So... Or if you got a license already, I'll buy you a module or a rule set or something like that. So, all right, everybody. Of course, it'll be the from the value menu of modules, at like a dollar or the free one or something <laughs> like that. Hey, but you I'll buy it for you. Uh, I will. I will uh, take the difference and we'll make it an ultimate license. Ooh. Oh my Ooh. god, that's crazy. Ooh. That is absolutely wow. crazy talk. Damn. Wow. All Fine, right. I'll go third. Uh, I'll go thirds with you guys on that. I'll go. Thirds All right, with so you. we'll All split right. it. Split it in threes. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, I'll be like, remember, yeah. remember yeah, I said cool. that. Yeah, nice. we got it recorded, Rob. That's why. And we'll have okay. to wait yeah, to put it on sale and stuff. We'll have to wait to put it on sale. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Send your money to your PayPal account. Yeah. One thirty-four yeah. divided by three. Right. Got it. I understand mm-hmm. right? You'll have some maps as well to give away. Oh, some, some maps. giveaways. Ooh, some right. Zovia maps next month, right? Yes. Ooh. Yes. 
Ooh, giveaways and galore. I'll draw a picture of my dog, Fudge. You can give that away, too, since we're... Nobody's <laughs> interested in a picture Fudge. of my dog? I, I just want to watch you eat a dog. corn dog. Only oh, if you yeah. code an NPC sheet for it. If you code the NPC sheet, we're good. We're good. I'll right, we'll a picture of your doggy worm. Oh, he's it's awesome. Bass, Isn't he? Hell. Oh, he, that's that's my that's that's my mother-in-law's dog. My dog's an English bulldog, oh. so they're they're good. All right, I got Sloppy Joe's waiting. I'm out, right. everybody. I got he's Dumbo right. waiting for me. See everybody Dave, next month. Dave, Thanks check for watching. Your DMs, Dave. Dave, check your DMs in Discord. Okay. All right. All right. See everybody. Bye. Bye.